right out. Um, this is just another little video that I'm uh, doing about um, the ball handles that I'm going to make for the Tay Glaive for the cross slide and the carriage handle. And I've been uh, playing around with uh, soft material at the moment uh, as brass. And this is uh, some of the tapers that I've uh, produced. Uh, this one here is a, a one degree taper, which is, I think, the equivalent of a, uh, um, a tapered uh, dowels, standard tapered dowels. Um, <clears throat> the handle um, that I am copying um, has a different taper on it and um, it's three degrees so what I had to do was to um, I had to make up a, a new template with at three degrees and how I did that was uh, I did it with a sign bar and uh, um, set it up that way and did it on the milling machine um, I've got it set up here now on this sliding block and I use the um, micrometer dial to put a feed on um, and I'm now trying out uh, mild steel um, I don't know what grade it is but it's a mild steel of some kind um, and uh, I've already started producing a three degree taper on there um, <coughs> So I thought I'd just give you an idea of um, of how this works. Uh, this slides in and out, and this rod here at the end, if you can see that, has a small ball bearing in there, um, 516 diameter, and that is attached to the sliding the sliding jaw um, and it presses up against the edge of the three degree uh, template and as the carriage goes forward of course it gradually moves the the uh, the tool at the same rate as the template so that's how it works. Um, it's not a bad finish on there. Um, I've got it running at about 1400 RPM, I think it is. Yeah, 1400. And there's a bit of spring. It's sticking out about two inches, at least two inches. So there's a slight amount of spring uh, when the initial cut takes place. Um, but uh, that can be eliminated with a second pass maybe um, I may even have to develop some form of of uh, system where I can use a a, um, a center for support I don't I don't think there's enough room there actually there may be I, I probably could uh, with, uh, with that uh, so so anyway, it's it's kind of going okay. I, um, I'm I'm happy with it. I've ordered some um, some uh, uh, um, soft uh, balls, uh, bearing balls uh, of um, five different sizes, and um, so I'm going to have to make a jig up for that as well for boring um, each end. Uh, the the large the large ball and the small ball and then of course there's the one in between which will be bored right the way through at the same taper as this and I should be able to I should be able to set up my top slide um, uh, uh, I should be able to set up my top slide and set it over at three degrees and make a corresponding tapered hole in the central ball um, so uh, I think everything's going to go 
pretty good. Um, I'm going to, what I'll do now is I'll just give you uh, um, a sample of the uh, of a cut. And uh, I've got some, I've been trying this out. I bought this at uh, a store recently and um, it's a bit, uh, it's like, uh, it's a little bit like a jelly. It's called Ultra Lube. I don't know how good it is. Uh, so I bought one of these bottles. I'm trying that. It's um, it's kind of nice. I was using cutting oil with uh, uh, diluted, um, but it flies off. This lube um, seems to. It's kind of sticky and it, it sticks to the to the to the metal, and uh, I think it it might be a better better way of uh, machining. Uh, in this instance, so I undo, I undo that, and I put a cut on, of, say, five thou on the micrometer, and I just lock that up, and then I push my hand with pressure up against the back of the slide and set the carriage in motion, and as you can see, it's. It's not bad. Um, it might seem slow to a lot of people. Uh, they may be wondering why can't you take a bigger cut and and so forth. But um, it's it, this is not exactly a watchmaker um, work, but at the same time. It's kind of important that the taper is nice, and if you take too big a cut, you get more spring on the front end there, so I'm just taking it easy. That's pretty nice. I mean, it's just a small lathe, so you can't expect too much from it. Just make sure there's no chips around the the template. I'll do another another cut, five thou. Doesn't seem much, but it soon reduces the diameter. I'll put some of that on. You'll see this stuff come out. Yeah, it's a little bit like a jelly. Another cut, five thou.
see if there's any spring there. Yeah, it seems to be okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. It's going to look pretty good when it's all assembled with the balls on there. Of course this is not the true size yet, I don't know. I've got the sizes, the length of the taper and the distance between the two outer balls. I've got all that dimension on the drawing, but this is just a, a sample to show you how it comes out. I don't think, I mean that's, if that's taken off half a thou, it's very fine paper, emery paper, so if that's taken off half a thou, I, I doubt that even. There's a little bit of a uh, blemish there and a little one there, but I think basically the taper is going to be okay. Uh, in any way, it's not a locating taper like a, um, like locating a die or anything like that. So um, I think any errors can be um, built up. I can even silver solder the balls on, or just use a, maybe I'll just use a Loctite because. Um, that's pretty strong. So that's about it for now. I'm waiting for the balls to come along and uh, uh, in the meantime I'm going to continue experimenting with different materials. Um, I just wondered whether steel balls, uh, the three steel balls along the taper with a brass taper might, might kind of look nice. I, I don't know yet. I um, have to wait and see. So, okay, I'll call off now for the time being and I'll keep you updated. Thanks.